Welcome to the CBS Radio Mystery Theater Archives, the only YouTube channel which has the original classic episodes of the CBS Radio Mystery Theater in order with no ads. Thank you for listening, and now, enjoy the show. E.G. Marshall. We call ourselves modern, don't we? We say these are modern times. The years past are prehistoric or ancient or medieval. We say with some pride that we are modern, as though we'd smartened up considerably and discarded old, worn-out, discredited theories and practices. Yet our medicine has its roots in antique magic, and our science has its origins in archaic superstition. Without magic and superstition, it is unlikely we could have survived to become modern. She has everything. A loveliness to take your breath away. She has sweetness and gaiety. But she has something else. I don't know what it is. She has a wild talent. She's always had it. But what is it, a wild talent? No one knows precisely, except those, perhaps, who take the trouble to learn. Our mystery drama, The Red Frisbee, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Elspeth Eric and stars Robert Dryden. It is sponsored in part by True Value Hardware Stores and Luden's Medicated Cough Drops. I'll be back shortly with Act One. One of the Earth's loveliest seas is the Caribbean. In a gentle curve on the bosom of that sea lie the islands known as the Antilles. A man has come to one of these islands not only for the brilliant sky, the soft sands, the hot sun, and the cooling winds, but for the quiet and the isolation that only an island can give. What he finds there, we will tell you in this tale. I'd come to the island after three years spent with an aboriginal tribe in the interior of Australia. I needed to relax and reflect and try to sort out the ideas I wanted to incorporate into my article for the Anthropological Journal and later expand into a book. With me, I brought my voluminous notes, a suitcase full of old clothes, and my dog. (coughs) Haven't you had enough? Okay, okay, one more time. Okay, fetch! (laughs) Ha ha ha, good dog! He's so beautiful. What? He's beautiful. Oh, well, thank you. Have you always had him? Since he was a puppy, he's been all over the world with me. We just spent three years in Australia together before we came here. Look, here he comes. What's he got in his mouth? Oh, that's a frisbee. A what? A frisbee. You know, one of those round plastic things that you throw, you know. No, I don't know. I never had a frisbee. Oh, well, they're kind of fun. They go sailing through the air. All right, drop it, boy. Drop it. Oh, he doesn't want to. (laughs) He knows he looks handsome with a red frisbee in his mouth. With black hair and all. What kind of dog is he? Labrador Retriever. All right, drop it, boy. Good boy. That's enough now. I'll throw it again for him. I like to see him swim with it in his mouth. He looks so beautiful. Okay. Fetch! <laughs> oh, he's a good swimmer, isn't he? Oh, yes. Well, he swim out very far. Well, as far as I can throw the frisbee, I guess. That's wonderful. You like to swim? I can't. You can't swim? You live on this wonderful island and you can't swim? I used to be able to. What happened? 
I forgot how. You forgot? Yes. Oh, here he comes with his red frisbee. Uh, how could you forget? I just forgot. Oh, look. He wants you to throw it for him again. Well, you do this all day if I throw it for him. And would he swim very far up? Mm, I suppose he would. All dogs can swim, I guess. No, not right away. They have to be taught. Like people? Not exactly, but they have to be made to realize that they can. That's about what it amounts to, I guess. They don't always know that they can. They're as surprised as anybody when they find out. It's fascinating. Are you going to throw the frizzy again? No, I think he's had enough for today. We both have. Will you uh, be coming back tomorrow? No, I imagine so. Maybe I'll see you here. That would be nice. Well, bye, Ben. Bye. Hey, hey, uh, wait a minute. Uh, you, young lady. What? How did you know my name? See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. I watched her swinging off down the beach. I judged she might be about 17, though she could as well have been 12 or 20. She wore a sort of shapeless smock. Her legs were a ruddy brown from the sun, and her hair was streaked in shades of gold. I remembered her eyes, which were the startling blue of Delft China. I heard again her clear young voice calling, Goodbye, Ben. See you tomorrow. And the next day, I was on the beach early in the morning. Not now, boy. No, no, no. We're waiting for someone. Well, what is it, boy? Hey, hey, hey. What are you doing? Where are you going? Come back here. He'd seen her before I did, before she rounded the curve in the shoreline. Or had he simply sensed her coming? Or what? At any rate, there she was, swinging down the beach toward me. Hello. Hello there. You're out early. So are you. I didn't keep you waiting, did I? No, I'd have waited all day. Oh, you wouldn't have had to do that. I knew you were here. I had to do something for my mother first. How did you know I was here? I knew. But how? The way a person knows those things. <laughs> but people don't just know those things. Don't they? Oh, you saw me from your house. Where do you live? Do you have a place on the beach? Oh, no. We live in the great house. What's the great house? <laughs> just a house. They call it the great house because it used to be where the governor lived. The Spanish governor, long time ago. Ben, aren't you going to throw the red frisbee for the dog? See, he wants you to. How did you know my name is Ben? I guess you told me. I never told you. You never asked. I never told you, but when you left yesterday, you said goodbye, Ben. Why don't you throw the frisbee? Ben is my name. But you had no way of knowing that. My name I is... really don't care what your name is. May I throw the red frisbee? Sure, go ahead if you want to. I do want to. There. There, fetch, boy. Why, he does swim beautifully. What's your name? Nikki. you told me yesterday that dogs had to learn how to swim. Now, what I said was they have to find out that they can swim. I guess that's true of people, too. Probably we can all swim, but we have to find out at some time or other that we can. It's quite a discovery for a person or a dog. How did your dog find out he can swim? Well, it was when we were in Australia. I made a weekend trip to the Great Barrier Reef, and of course I took him along. I was sitting on the beach with him the way we're sitting now, and I had this red frisbee, same one I have now, and I threw it into the water. And he plunged in after it and brought it back. Next time, I threw it further, and he brought it back. I'd never thrown it so far that he couldn't stand up in the water. But then I did. I threw it way out, out to where the water was over his head. But he went after it? Oh, yes. And he got to about three feet away from it, and all of a sudden, his feet didn't touch bottom anymore. But he stretched his neck out and grabbed the frisbee anyway between his teeth. And he tried to turn around to bring it back to me, and... That was when he found out he couldn't touch bottom. And he started to swim? Not yet. He sank under the water. Oh, no. He came up again right away. He looked so surprised, and then he went under again. What did you do? Did you just stand there? 
He went down for the third time, and I started in after him. I should hope. But before I got to him, he started to swim, paddling away like mad. You know the way dogs do? Oh, I know. And there was such a look in his eyes, such a look of triumph, belief in himself. It was as though his ancestors from way back, hundreds of thousands of years ago, had whispered to him somehow down the ages as though they'd said... You know how you can do it. And he did it. I've never forgotten that. That's a beautiful story, Benedict. It's true. What did you call me just now? I I don't know. Yes, you do. You called me Benedict. Yesterday, you called me Ben. Well, that could be a lucky guess, but... Ben is usually short for Benjamin, and my name is Benedict, and that's what you called me. Well, if that's your name... Yes, but how did you know? How could you know that? You're kind of hurting my arm. Oh, I'm sorry. Ben, would you like to meet my mother? I'd like you to. All right. Anytime. Ooh, you come this afternoon for tea. I'd love to. Ask anybody where the great house is. Everybody knows the great house. All right. Oh, and Benedict... Be sure to bring your dog with you. It was easy to see why it had been called the Great House. The woodwork was solid mahogany and carved. The doors were mahogany, too, nearly six inches thick. The rooms were large and square and full of sunlight. The girl, Nikki, met me at the door and took me to her mother. A beautiful woman with the same delt blue eyes. This is Benedict, Mother. And this is his dog. I'm so glad, Mrs. Oh, why don't you call me Monica? Since you and Nikki are such good friends, we're very informal here. Well, thank you. Ben, may I take the dog down to the beach? Nikki, please. I just want to throw the red frisbee for him. Please, Nikki. May I, Ben? Well, if you want to. I won't stay long. I, uh... I hope you don't think my daughter's rude. She has strange ways, but she's a good girl. She's a wonderful girl. Oh? You think so? Mm. She has everything. She has a a loveliness that takes your breath away. Yes, she is lovely. She has sweetness and gaiety. Yes. But she has something else. I don't know what that is. You don't? Do you? She has a wild talent. A a what? A wild talent. Well, what is that? What is a wild talent? No one knows precisely, except perhaps those who take the trouble to learn. All talent is wild, really. It comes from heaven knows where. It cannot be coaxed or bribed or bought. It cannot be cultivated. It cannot be manufactured or in any way acquired. But no matter where it comes from or in whom it resides, talent is never a tame thing. It is always wild, as the winds are wild, as the seas are wild, as the world was in its beginnings and as it remains at its core, wild. I'll be back shortly with Act Two. Sands, the color of a ripe peach, on an island in the blue waters of the Caribbean Sea, Benedict has met a girl called Nikki, who lives with her mother in a stately home called the Great House. Nikki has persuaded Benedict to come to the Great House to meet her mother, but no sooner had introductions been made than she asked to be excused to take Benedict's dog to the beach, leaving Benedict alone with her mother. I hope you don't think my daughter rude. She has a wild talent. Uh, a wild talent? Is that what you said? You've never heard of such a thing? I can't say I have. What is a wild talent? Well, no one knows precisely. If you take the trouble to find out. Well, what is it? Is it is it mystical? Is it magical? Would it help if I said that it had something to do with extrasensory perception? Thought transference? 
Did your daughter tell you that she knew my name without my ever having mentioned it? No, she didn't tell me. But then she wouldn't. And not only that, she called me Ben, which is my nickname. And the next day she called me Benedict, my given name. Suppose she was lucky in guessing that I'm generally called Ben. She could have assumed it was the diminutive of Benjamin, a pretty common name. But she didn't. She called me Benedict, a fairly uncommon name. I'm surprised she didn't mention it to you. Nikki's very casual about such things. She takes them for granted. But does she think that everyone is so so intuitive? Doesn't she realize that she is somehow different? I don't think she gives it any thought at all. Tell me, has she always had this wild talent? She never showed any sign of it. At least none that I noticed until two years ago. Uh, until... Yes? Until her brother died. Oh. Oh, she didn't tell me. I, uh, I didn't know she'd had a brother. He was drowned. Oh, I am sorry. Well, my goodness. You were invited here for tea and I've never given you any. Oh, that's quite all right. No, no, I'll put the water on right away. It won't take but a minute. There's no hurry. Nikki? Oh, Oh, it's you. Your mother's in the kitchen. She'll be right back. She... Nikki, are you all right? You look a little... You're not feeling ill or anything, are you? I'm all right. <laughs> well, did you two have a good time with a red frisbee? Oh, yes. I threw it very far out. Well, fine. He will be ready shortly. Uh, Nikki's back. Nikki? Nikki, uh, go upstairs immediately and lie down. The tide turned. Go upstairs, take a hot bath, and lie down in your room. Yes, Mother. You see, the tide turned, and I, I had to come back. I'm sorry, Benedict. What's the matter with her? She said the tide turned. It was when the tide turned that her brother drowned. Benedict, I don't think we can have our tea today, but come back tomorrow, will you? And I'll explain what she meant when she said the tide turned. I wasn't sure that I'd see Nikki on the beach the next morning. She looked so pale, so ill when she returned to the great house the previous afternoon, as though she'd seen a ghost, would be the way some people would have described it. And from the little I'd learned of her brother's death, I thought this might indeed be true. Nevertheless, I went to the beach at my accustomed early hour in the company of my dog, carrying in his mouth his beloved red frisbee. The dog looked up suddenly, just as he had the day before. The frisbee dropped onto the sand, and he started his gallop down the sand. I knew then that Nikki would soon come into sight. And so she did, her loose smock blowing in the wind, her brown legs carrying her confidently, almost arrogantly, toward me. Hi, how are you? I'm fine. I'm glad. Where's the red frisbee? He wants you to throw it. That's here. May I throw it for him? Certainly. Fetch. Fetch, boy. How's your mother? <laughs> oh, she's fine. I'm sorry you didn't get any tea yesterday. Oh, that's all right. She thought she should look after me. Did you do what she said? Did you take a hot bath and lie down in your room? Of course. That's what I always do. Nikki. Does the turning of the tide always upset you? Turns at different times, you know. Sometimes it's rather gentle, and sometimes it isn't gentle at all. Well, that depends on the sun and the moon. Does it? It's because of the attraction of the sun and the moon that the tides ebb and flow. They act unequally on the waters of the earth. They disturb their equilibrium. Do you understand? All I know is that here they happen quickly. Suddenly. There's no warning. Well, that's because... Well, never mind why it is. I wouldn't understand it anyway. I'm not clever like you. All I know is that when the tide goes out so fast... So fast, one hardly has time. 
Oh, here he is. With his red frisbee. May, may I throw it at him? Of course. Mitch! <laughs> Nikki, I... Uh... Did you like my mother? Very much. Not a pity I had to spoil everything. You didn't spoil anything. Oh, yes, I did. No, no. As a matter of fact, she invited me to come back today for tea. And I accepted. And you do like her. I told you I... Because I know she likes you. Did she say so? No. Uh, not in those words, but I, I know she does. Now, just how would you know a thing like that, hmm? Do you think I have to be told things in order to know them? Or read them in a book? People often tell things that are not true, and books can be wrong. But when you know... Well, then you know. That afternoon at the great house, things went almost exactly as they had the day before. Nikki greeted me, then greeted my dog, then said... Did you bring your red frisbee with you? Of course. We never go anywhere without it. Mother will be down in a minute. She knows you're here. May I take the dog to the beach and throw the frisbee for him? Well, if you want to, but... I do want to. Nikki, where are you going? To the beach. I wish you'd stay. I... I am sorry, Ben. Oh, that's all right. She enjoys the dog letter. Well, she's forever doing this. Doing what exactly? Bringing men home to meet me and leaving us alone. Men of all ages, all nationalities. I think she wants to marry me off or something. <laughs> that shouldn't be hard, provided you wanted to cooperate. After my son was drowned, I... I was very melancholy for a long time. Very long time. I shut myself in my room, wouldn't talk to anyone for almost a year... Finally, my husband grew tired of a wife who was no wife at all, and he left. Oh, I'm sorry. I wish I could have been. Actually, I didn't care. Well, now, let's have our tea, shall we? This time I have it all ready for you, and some little cakes. Oh, splendid. I'm hungry. I spent a long time on the beach today, and it gave me quite an appetite. Well, help yourself. Lemon or milk? Ah, uh, a little milk, please. Nikki informed me on the beach this morning that you liked me. Well, I do. Here's your tea. Thank you. I asked her if you'd said so, and she said no, that she just knew. As usual, her instincts are right. She has a great contempt for things that are learned and a great devotion to things which are simply known. I've never been quite sure just what she means. Why can't she swim? Oh, well, she used to swim quite well. What happened? Did it have something to do with the tides, with the turning of the tide? It had everything to do with the turning of the tide. I'm curious. Living on an island, one would think she would... But if you don't want to tell me... I've never talked about it since it happened. But since it happened, Nikki hasn't been able to swim. Not a stroke. She's tried, poor child, but she just can't. She says she's forgotten how. Oh, can one forget a thing like that? I thought it was something once learned, never forgotten. Nikki forgot how to swim the day her brother was drowned. They'd gone in the ocean together on a beautiful day, just like this one. Well, if, if you don't want to talk about it... No, I it, do. Uh... I do. They swam out to where some rocks jutted out into the sea. And they played on the rocks for a while, sunned themselves, went back into the water again. It was then, just then, that the tide turned. It started to go out? The tide turned suddenly down here. They can catch you unawares. At first, they laughed. And really, they laughed, so Nikki told me later. But as the receding tide grew stronger, they stopped laughing and clung to the rocks. They started shouting for help. No one. No one. Please, don't go they on. They grew weaker, and it grew harder to hold on to the slippery rocks. The tide grew stronger, and... 
at last my son let go. And the tide started to carry him out to sea. Nikki swam after him, but she couldn't quite reach him. And then... And then... Please. Some natives who had just beached their boat saw them, and they knew immediately what had happened. They went out after them. They reached them. At least they reached Nikki. They hauled her into the boat. And then they turned to save her brother. But it was too late. He'd gone under. He never came to the surface again. There was so little I could say when Monica finished her tragic story. I got up to go, sickened by the inadequacy of my own limp words. But at the door, she said, Come back tomorrow, will you, Benedict? Come early? If you want me to. I do. I do. Tomorrow morning. I need to talk to you. You think you've heard everything, but there's more. Oh, there's more. Have you ever been a guest in a house far grander, far more beautiful than your own? Perhaps it overlooked the bluest of seas, and flowers grew all around it. Palms and pines, and little yellow birds that perched on their branches. And perhaps you thought to yourself, how could anyone ever be unhappy in such a house? Well, as our story has intimated, and will later reveal, anyone can. I'll return shortly with Act Three. Caribbean island in her home called the Great House. The woman called Monica has been telling Benedict the tragic story of the drowning of her son two years before. The boy's sister, Nikki, had been saved, but her brother drowned. Unable to go on with the tragic tale, Benedict took his leave. The next morning, I took my dog to the beach, proudly carrying his red frisbee in his mouth. I was prepared to wait for Nikki to appear around the bend in the shoreline, but I found her waiting for me, staring intently out to sea. Oh, there you are. Oh, here we are. I want to talk to you. Well, how about him? He wants you to throw the frisbee for him. Later I will. I I have to tell you something. What's that? My mother loves you. Oh, now, Nikki, you couldn't possibly know a thing like that. I do know it. It's impossible. We've only met twice. But you're going to see her again this morning. She told me. Well, she... She wants to talk to me about something. She loves you. It's impossible. We hardly know each other at all. What difference does that make? She hasn't loved anyone for two years. Now she loves you, and you... What about me? Do you... Do you love her? What do you think? I don't know. What's happened to your wild talent? Oh, that. That's what your mother calls your way of knowing what other people are thinking and feeling. Everybody wants to give names to things. They think once they've given something a name, they've got it pinned down. Like your dog. He's not really a dog. He's what he is. And he wouldn't be any less than what he is if we called him something else. We didn't call him anything at all. So why call having feelings about people a wild talent? Why call it anything? I think I see what you mean. Uh, look, it's time for me to go see your mother. You want to come with me? I, I think I'd rather stay here with your dog. I'll, I'll throw the frisbee for him. See, he wants me to. All right. And when you get tired of that, come to the great house. Maybe I will. I walked slowly to the great house, not really knowing that I wanted to hear the end of Monica's story. She'd been so distressed the day before, but I'd given my word, and when she admitted me, she seemed composed and cordial. Thank you for coming, Benedict. I said I would. 
Well, where's your big black dog? I'm used to seeing you two together. I left him on the beach with Nicky. Did she say anything to you this morning about... about me? Well... Did she? Please tell me. She said... I don't know where the notion came from. I'm sure not from you. She said that you... you were fond of me. She said more than that, didn't she? Yes. She said that you loved me. Yes, she told me that too, that I loved you. I'm sorry, Ben. I hope it didn't embarrass you. Not really. You see, ever since her brother's death and her father's desertion, she's been trying to find someone for me to love, someone to replace the loss. She brings men to the house the way you'd bring gifts to someone who was ill. That's very sweet. Sweet, yes, but futile. Well, now... I told you yesterday that I had more to tell you about... about the day my son was drowned. Monica, it must be painful for you to talk about... No, it's not the drowning I want to talk about. No? It's what came after. When the natives came to this house. Uh, One of them... came into the room, this room... And he told me about the turning of the tide, about the children clinging to the rocks, about the letting go, about setting out in the boat to save them. And I waited, of course, to hear that they'd been rescued. There was a silence for a few seconds. And then the man said, The girl is alive, ma'am. And I said, What about the boy? And there was another silence. And then he said, Ma'am, the boy was drowned. And I stared at him. I was filled with horror and shock. Terrible shock. Of course. And then I heard myself say, I heard myself. The words simply just burst from me. I never meant... But I said it. Not gently. Not softly. It was a cry from my heart. I said, Oh, why did it have to be the boy? Oh, my. No, wait. You haven't heard it all. You haven't heard the worst. I heard myself saying those terrible words, and then... Then I looked up, and standing in the doorway was... Nikki. Nikki, my daughter. And the look on her face. The stricken look on her young face. She couldn't have misunderstood what I meant. But if one of them had to be saved and one had to die, why couldn't it have been the boy who was saved? Why couldn't she have been the one to die? What can I say? What can anyone say? I've tried to atone for my awful words. There is no atoning. I said them. I meant them when I said them. And she knew. What has happened is that Nikki has been trying to give me back my son in some way. Any way. Any man who was attracted to her, and many have been, she's brought to me. Laid them at my feet, so to speak, offering them to me as though she were the guilty one because she lived while her brother died. Oh, uh, that's Nikki at the door with my dog. She said she might... Well, shall I let her in or shall I tell her to wait or go back to the beach? Tell her to go back. I, I can't. Not right now. Of course. Where's Nikki, boy? It's just the dog. Nikki's not with him. Where would she be? I left her with the dog at the beach. Uh, Monica, the dog's telling us something. Well, Nikki, where is Nikki? Come on, let's go to the beach. She's not here. What are you looking for? The red frisbee. What for? I don't know. Except she said she was going to stay here and throw it for the dog. Well, why would she have changed her mind? Why did the dog come to the house without her? Could she have gone someplace else? Where? Why? She'd have taken the dog with her. Ben, I see something. What? Out there in the water. 
Uh, it could be... Nikki can't swim. I'm going in. It could be her. I'm going to fetch a boat. Uh, what are the fishermen? Hurry. No. If that's Nikki, she's pretty oh, far out. I see a boat. I see a boat. Help! Help! The fishermen with their boat got to her before I did, and it was they who saved her. When the doctor had been called, treated her for exhaustion, ordered her to bed, and left... Monica joined me downstairs in the drawing room of the great house. She's going to be all right. Yes. Thank God. In a few days... Benedict. Yes, Monica? Nikki was right. I do love you. Because I saved your daughter? No, I didn't do that. The natives did. I loved you before that. Nikki knew it right away. Oh, that wasn't love. It may have seemed like love, but it wasn't. You felt gratitude. You felt relief. Because after two years, you told me the story of the drowning and all that came after. You trusted me to understand, and I think I did. There's a feeling that mothers have for their sons that's unlike any other. It's the closest thing to pure love that a woman can feel. Now, I don't know why this should be so, but it's so. No. No, you don't love me, Monica. Now, now I'd like to go up and say goodbye to Nikki. You're leaving? Mm-hmm. Going back to the mainland. I hope you'll come back one day. Oh, I shall. I shall. <laughs> Hello. You knew who it was, didn't you? Of course. I'm leaving tomorrow, Nikki. I came to say goodbye. Oh. When are you coming back? Oh, next year, after I've done some writing. You knew I'd come back, didn't you? Of course. Nikki, when I swam out to try and save you... You didn't really have to do that, you know. I was afraid you'd drown. But I was swimming. You can't swim. You told me. I was swimming. Not very well. But I was swimming. It came back to me. Why did you swim so far out? When they picked you up, the water was way over your head. I had to. Nikki, were you trying to drown yourself? I told you. I was swimming. Yeah, but so far out... I was looking for my brother. Nikki, you must have known you couldn't find your brother. I had to try. I've been trying for so long to give her something. Someone. I couldn't. It's not up to you, Nikki. Your mother has to find someone to love who loves her. She has to do that by herself. But if... If I could do it for her, she'd... Forgive me. Forgive you for what? For... I don't know. For... For being alive? I guess so. Yes. Nobody has to be forgiven for that, Nikki. It's not a sin to be alive. Are you sure? I'm very sure. Nikki, when I was swimming out to try and rescue you, I found something floating on the water. I found this. Why, it's the red frisbee. The waves should have brought it back to shore. Why didn't they? Because, because I kept it with me. It's how I learned to swim again. Remember, you told me how your dog found out he could swim? How you... Kept throwing the frisbee further and further until he was over his head. And how it came to him all of a sudden that he could swim. Well, that's what I did. I kept throwing the frisbee out further and further and... Suddenly it came to me. I could swim. Then it was just like you said about the dog. I felt so... So triumphant. I believed in myself. Nikki, I have to go now. Ben, you love me, don't you? Now, 
How did you know that? I just knew. You haven't lost your wild talent after all, have you? Oh, that. It's a beautiful thing to have a wild talent. I suppose so. Do you, uh... Do you by any chance love me? I don't know. Not yet. Maybe it'll come to you. I hope when it does, you'll discover that you do love me. Next year. When you come back. Then I'll know. While I was packing, the dog sat watching me, the red frisbee in his mouth. There was always a chance we might go back to the beach again. And I thought, what will Nikki say a year from now? Will she say yes, she loves me? A warm feeling swept over me, a, a certainty that she would. A bright glow of anticipation. She loves me even now, I thought. She just needs time to find it out. What do you think, I said to my dog. And he dropped the red frisbee on the floor, stood up on his hind legs and licked my face. Was he trying to tell me that I would still have his love, even if I couldn't have hers? Or was he telling me that I was right? That I, too, had a wild talent? Does a wild talent live in each of us? Can we stop trying to be so clever, so learned, so successful, and return somehow to what we call primitive? To the style of living where our feelings count for more than our brains. Where our feelings count for everything, if they are free and tuned to the world we inhabit and the creatures that inhabit it with us. Once again, I can only ask the question... I do not have the answer. I'll be back shortly. They say that when Gertrude Stein was dying, I knew that she was dying, she turned to her friend and companion of many years and said, Alice, what is the answer? And Alice replied, no one knows. Then Miss Stein, after a long look at her friend, said, All right, then. What is the question? Our cast included Robert Dryden, Jada Rowland, and Terry Keene. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. Oh, for heaven's sake, why didn't you stay out of my life? Why did you have to call me? I want to see you, Edith. Why not? Because, because I'm an old woman now. No, not you. Yes, yes, I'm old. Older than I ought to be, thanks to you. I look older than my mother does. That's what my last ten years were about, Harry. Working like a dog, no money, just, just getting poor and old. Let me come up to you just for a while. We could talk. No, stay away from here. You understand me? You say you're a dead man. Fine. Stay dead, Harry. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.